Hello and welcome to the Fox Park Stadion, one of the most famous stadiums in German football for a DFB Cup quarter-final tie that exudes history and tradition. It's Hamburg against Karlsruhe, two former winners of this famous competition. Fight it out for a place in the semi-final in front of 25,000 supporters here in Hamburg tonight. And this all Bundesliga 2 affair means that the final four will have at least one second-tier representative. And with record champions Bayern out, holders Dortmund out, the likes of Leverkusen and recent winners Frankfurt and Wolfsburg all suffering early exits. This has already been the most extraordinary cup campaign in years. And tonight we're ready to write the next chapter. Well, Hamburg needed a remarkable penalty shootout in Köln to progress in the last 16 just as they did against Nuremberg in the previous round. And now they've the chance to reach the semi-finals for the second time in four years. Karlsruhe are not here by chance either. They really earned it. They may have scraped a fortunate 1-0 win against 1860 Munich last time out. But before that, they knocked out one of the favourites, Bayer Leverkusen. And now they're aiming for a first semi-final appearance since 1997. Karlsruhe, the visitors, come into this one on the back of a decent run of form. They're unbeaten in the last three in the league. Saturday saw an entertaining and hard-fought one-all draw with Schalke. Hamburg, on the other hand, suffered their first defeat in three months on Sunday. And at the same time, their first home loss of the season. And it came in one of the biggest matches around the Nord Derby against Werder Bremen. And they've made three changes to the side that lost to Werder. Jan Giamera has been an unused sub recently, but he's in for Moritz Heyer at right back. He'll be suspended at the weekend in midfield. The former Karlsruhe man David Kinsombi also gets a rest start. He's in for the Dutch under 21 international Ludwig Reis. And on the left hand side of the attack, there's a first ever start in a Hamburg shirt for Georgia international Georgi Chakvedatze. He's on loan from Ghent. Well, Karlsruhe have made just the one change to the side that drew with Schalke. And it's in defence. Christoph Korbelt has returned from injury and he slots straight back in into the centre-back position in place of club veteran Daniel Gordon. Well, Kyung Rok Choi got the equaliser on Saturday against Schalke and also the winner in Leverkusen in round two. He's supporting the club's uh, top scorer this season, Philip Hoffman. is 12 for the season for him. So those are the players looking forward to the chance of a lifetime, as Karlsruhe coach Christian Eichner puts it. So I'm Rob Turner on commentary for you for what promises to be an intriguing cup tie. In fact, it's the only tie in the quarterfinals featuring two past winners of the competition. Hamburg and Karlsruhe have lifted the golden trophy five times between them. And you have to go back a long way for those past triumphs to 1963, 1976 and most recently 1987 for Hamburg's wins and for Karlsruhe it's uh, all the way back to 1955 and 1956 when they beat none other than Hamburg in the final. Well since those halcyon days cup success has been rather sparse for both these sides. Hamburg have only reached the semi-finals twice in the last 25 years, most recently in 2019 when they lost to Leipzig, a side they could potentially meet again if both progress. Leipzig currently in action at Hanover 96, not too far down the road from Hamburg. And that 1987 cup win for Hamburg was the last time that they got to the final at all. Now for Karlsruhe, it's only been two semi-finals in 60 years. They came in successive years in the 1990s when they reached the 96 final, only to lose to Kaiserslautern. And then a year later were knocked out by Cottbus in the semis. Well, on paper, this is... A fairly evenly balanced affair. Hamburg currently fourth in Bundesliga 2, just three points off a promotion spot and eight points ahead of Karlsruhe, who are comfortable in mid-table. But the last two meetings in the league have both ended in a one-all draw. Should that be the case tonight after 90 minutes, we will have extra time and then a penalty shootout should there be no winner after that. 
Arsenal and Hamburg have needed penalties in both the previous two rounds. I saw off at Bundesliga two rivals Nuremberg in the second round and then last time out in the round of 16 they edged Bundesliga high flyers Köln in the most dramatic fashion. Köln's Florian Kainz thought he'd scored to keep his side in the shootout but it was then ruled out as he'd slipped and caused a double contact which meant that Hamburg progressed. Atmosphere rising inside the Fox Park at Stadion as these fans look to put the memories of, of Sunday's defeat to Werder Bremen behind them. A painful one it was. Going down a 3-2 to their bitter rivals. At the top of Bundesliga 2 as well, crucial points it was in the race for promotion. They conceded uh, two penalties in that game, both for handball. Well, Karlsruhe also made it here thanks to a penalty but it was in the regular time not in a shootout Marvin Vanticek scored the only goal of the game from the spot to see off her third division 1860 Munich it was a nervy but expected result Karlsruhe made headlines in the second round though with a stunning 2-1 win at Champions League chasing Bayer Leverkusen Interesting after uh, facing fourth tier Lotta in the first round. Tonight's fixture means Karlsruhe have faced teams from all four top levels of German football on their run to the quarterfinals. All four of those games have been away from home as well. For Hamburg, it's uh, a first home tie of this DFB Cup campaign. All three previous rounds, they faced away trips at uh, Hasn't always been the advantage you'd expect it for this uh, Hamburg side. They've lost five of the last seven DFB Pokal games here at the Volks Park Stadion. Plenty connects the two coaches, Christian Eichner of Karlsruhe and Tim Walter of Hamburg. Both are from the Karlsruhe area. Tim Walter was born in Bruchsal, just down the road from Karlsruhe's Wildpark Stadion. He spent 10 years at the club. The referee this evening, one of the most experienced in Germany, Felix Sertzweier. David Kinsombi there, former Karlsruhe man in the starting lineup in place of Ludovic Reis tonight. And there will be a moment of uh, silence before the game in uh, commemoration of the people who have died in the war in Ukraine. A sign of solidarity in the DFB Cup. Ukraine flags, Ukraine scarves present in the crowd as well. A strong show of unity by players from both sides. No to war is the strong message being sent. Under the motto, together for peace. Images that speak for themselves. Five times these two teams have met previously in the DFB Paul Karl Karlsruhe have come out on top on four of those occasions, most recently 10 years ago in 2012. Daniel Gordon on the bench tonight for Karlsruhe was on the pitch that day as well. Final preparations from referee Felix Zweier. A 
and Hamburg get us underway on an evening full of DFB Cup history and tradition at the Volkspark Stadion. A place in the semi-finals is up for grabs for Fortuma. Winners of this competition, it's a bright start from the home side as well. Yatters cross, cut out initially. This is Jan Guillemera in the starting lineup for Hamburg in place of Moritz Heyer at right back, his first start since the middle of January. Guillemera, Moritz Heyer will be suspended on Saturday in Nuremberg. This is Cech Vedatsi, the first sight of goal for the Georgia international, making his first start in a Hamburg shirt this evening. Impressed as a sub in recent weeks, Cech Vedatsi. He arrived at the club on loan from the Belgian side, Ghent, in January. But made quite an impression in a short space of time as well. Starting on the left-hand side of a three-pronged attack for Hamburg this evening in place of Ali Du, who's on the bench tonight. This is Kinsombi. Well, Christian Eichner, the Karlsruhe coach, called Hamburg's style of play unique. It's a very attacking manner of play under Tim Walter. It's based on complete dominance of the game. They do enjoy high amounts of possession. Hamburg over 62% in Bundesliga 2. That's a league high this season. And the example seen there as well of just how Hamburg like to play out from the back. Plenty of the moves for the home side start with Daniel Hoyer Fernandez in their goal. Almost like a playmaker. Does a carry risks with it, of course. On Sunday against Werder Bremen. It was uh, the high press from Werder that forced the mistake deep in Hamburg's half led to several threatening moments. This is the captain, Sebastian Schornlau. Back to Fernandez again in that advanced position outside of his goal, and he may be in some trouble here. Guillemera can just about get away with, though, under pressure from Choi. to see here how uh, Karlsruhe employing a similar kind of tactic to Werder trying to press Hamburg high deep in their own half trying to force those individual errors it's a Sonny Kittle Man who pulls the strings in midfield for Hamburg. Ten assists in Bundesliga 2 for him. Recently as well became Hamburg's top scorer in Bundesliga 2. 27 goals. Undertaking Terodde and his attempted cross here is intercepted by Daniel O'Shaughnessy. Kittle straight across to take the corner. Cleared by Vanicek. And again, it's uh, Czech for that's it. Not afraid to have an attempt from distance. And go down as uh, his second opportunity of these uh, opening few minutes at the Volkspark Stadion. Confident start by the home side. Very much to type as well, looking to dominate the game. of uh, Cech Vinatze's attempts that would ever really trouble Marius Gersbeck in that Karlsruhe goal. Cotida wins the throw. Two full-backs, Akita, Karlsruhe's Attacking strategy, Tida on the right and Philip Heiser on the left-hand side, both weighed in 
with a number of assists, 11 between them this season. And that man there, the recipient of a high number of them, Philip Hoffman, a danger man in the middle. It's going to be launched in long by O'Shaughnessy. Kinsombi at the second attempt can clear. Header away is by Sean Lau. This is Benjamin Goller, who's on loan at Karlsruhe from Hamburg's great rivals of Werder Bremen. This is Glatzel. Knocked away from him by Christoph Kulbaltz. And now Karlsruhe will come. Van Cech, just uh, straight slightly offside. Pass just a, a fraction too late from Marco Tida. Again, Hoyer Fernandez acting like a playmaker. It's a, a risky strategy that Hamburger employed, but drawing the press and now able to exploit space on the left through Sonny Kittel. Kittel just held up by Marco Tida. Czech Fernandez demanding plenty of the ball in these opening stages. This is Hoffman, is able to turn, but the ball to Choi was telegraphed by Guillermera. And Kinsombi. Two around him, and the Karlsruhe double press forces the throw as well. This is Tim Breithaupt. It's away by Philip Heiser. Breithaupt in the uh, defensive prong of the midfield axis, that three-man midfield, all local to Karlsruhe. Vanny Cech, Joanne Gondorf and Breithaupt all from the Karlsruhe region. Check is caught by Sonny Kittle here down in some discomfort as well. That foot high from Sonny Kittle. But seems to think it was uh, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Play will continue. Choi is on target against Schalke on Saturday. The winner at Bayer Leverkusen in the second round as well. The South Korean. Bright out. It's Philip Heiser. It's a clever ball in for Choi. And out for the Karlsruhe throw again. Well, the first 10 minutes have very much been the evenly balanced affair that we would uh, have been expecting before kickoff. Both previous meetings between these two sides ended in a one all draw. Most recently at Karlsruhe's Wildpark Stadion in the Hinrunde in Bundesliga 2. Turns away from Jerome Gondorf. This 
with Jonas Neffert. Another former Karlsruhe player in Hamburg's round. Sat two spells with KSC. Saw memories of that meeting in the Hindwunder as well, back on his old uh, stomping ground. So Jonas Neffert broke his toe. to play on very much an integral part of uh, Tim Walter's system at Hamburg. <laughs> Vuskovic, Boya Fernandez. And not by chance that the Hamburg goalkeeper has played the most passes of anyone at his club this season. It's open up now for Yatter if he can keep the ball in. He's just stretching too much. And it easy for Heiser, who's uh, rather carelessly conceded possession. Gondorf was waiting for Hoffman to make the run, and here is Hoffman! That's Karlsruhe's first attempt at goal. Hoffman unable to get any purchase on the header, but Hamburg it is now who attack with Yatta. Oh, and into the area, it's dangerous, but it's too far ahead of Robert Gladsell. But Bakary Yatta showing just how dangerous that pace of his is. Hofmann always stretching to get power on the header. And in an instant, Bakary Yatta was in behind the defence. He's the fastest player at the club. Just touching 35 kilometres an hour he's been recorded at this season. Kaiser on for Hofmann. Free kick goes Karlsruhe's way. Jonas Neffert penalised. This is Vanicek. Vanicek again. Choi. Crucial deflection off uh, Vuskovic. Took the sting out of the cross. Hoffman was lurking. Mario Vuskovic, Croatia, under 21 international, just 20 years of age. On loan from Hadjuk Split. Slotted into the sides after an injury to Jonas David. He's not missed a minute in any of the last 12 matches now. Mario Vuskovic. A formidable presence alongside Sebastian Schoenlau. This is Meffert. Now Sonny Kittle. Hot wide for Yatta. That's too far though from David Kinsombi. Kinsombi in the starting lineup tonight for Ludovic Reitz. A man, another man with the uh, Karlsruhe past. David Kinsombi, 26 appearances for Karlsruhe. Hey, hey, hey. 
followed uh, Tim Walter to Hamburg from Holstein Kiel in 2019 when Walter was in charge at uh, Hamburg's northern neighbours. In fact, Walter's first ever match as a senior coach came here for Kiel. It was a 3 0 win. An impressive job application early on. Light out, out to Philip Heiser. It's the give and go from Choi. On a couple of occasions now, they've managed to create the opening for the cross for Philip Heiser, the man with eight assists to his name in Bundesliga 2 this season. That's a club high. Very much the focus of their endeavours going forwards. Of course, the risk is always there. With Heiser pushing forward, the gap opens up for Yatta to exploit behind him. Guillermo is playing more in defensive midfield than at uh, right back. This is Czech for that set. It goes all the way through to Sonny Kittel. Perhaps maybe disappointed with the finish. That was a better opportunity than it may have looked at first glance. Took the bobble. But still, landed invitingly for Sonny Kittel. Hamburg's best opening of the evening so far. O'Shaughnessy back to Marius Gersbeck. Not as comfortable in the uh, build up play from the back as uh, perhaps Oye Fernandez has looked in these opening 20 minutes. Vanicek over the top. The opening's on now for Karlsruhe. It's a vital and brilliantly timed challenge by Sebastian Schornlau. Well, Benjamin Goller had passed Hoya Fernandez, itching to pull the trigger, and Sebastian Schornlau prevents what would have been a certain opener for the visitors. Vanicek with the corner. The header by Hoffman straight into the arms of Hoya Fernandez. Well, Hamburg may be dominating possession so far, but it's Karlsruhe, who've carved out the more meaningful opportunities. Guillermo. The cross is a good one. It's cleared by Tida. He appeals for the penalty, but Mefford plays on. And this time the handball is given against Jerome Gondorf. Clearly demonstrating to Felix Zweier. Thought it uh, came off his chest. <laughs> A 
And here the incident where Hamburg initially thought they may have had a penalty it was uh, Gladsek. Just brushed over, should we say, by uh, Christoph Kulbalt. Three over the ball. Vuskovic. And Kittel just remaining now. The left foot of a Sonny Kittel. It's going to be Vuskovic. Straight into the wall. And the chance for Karlsruhe to break as well with Benjamin Gollo. He's all on his own though, up against two. Just held up by Muheim. But now it's open for Choi. Choi for Karlsruhe, good save by Hoya Fernandez. Not for the first time this evening, the Hamburg keeper has kept his side in the game. And Yatta trying to break forward, that should be too far for King Sombi. I think we see just how quick Defence can turn into attack. Golo was all on his own, with no support. The vision from Gondorf to spot the run of Choi, but the shot straight at Taya Fernandez. Gladsek, who's been rather quiet by his standards so far. Hamburg's top scorer up front, the man with nine goals in his last eight outings in Bundesliga 2. 15 goals for the season for him. But they've been unable to fashion out anything for him so far. As we approach the midway point of the first half at the Volkspark Stadion, still goalless, but still... Very much Karlsruhe, who've had the better of the chances. Jack Finanza was looking to spark some inspiration. Jack Finanska just breezes past Vanicek. A run back strongly by Kittel, but miscommunication. But as is so often the case, Sebastian Schoenlo had it covered for Hamburg. Vuskovic sweeps the ball out to the far side of Jack Fernandze. This is Muheim in support for Glatzel in the middle. And there was that first sight of goal for Robert Glatzel. Muheim with the cross. Glatzel not with the connection he may have wanted. Wrote himself into the history books, did uh, Robert Glatzel just a few weeks ago. Scored a hat trick inside of seven minutes, 45 seconds away at Darmstadt in their 5 0 victory. Choi just receiving treatment. Chance for a breather for Philip Heiser as well. They've been involved down that left hand side.
Choi will be uh, unable to continue, just getting uh, consolation from his coach, uh, Christian Eichner. Well, Christian Eichner said before the game that uh, his team would have to have a very high threshold of suffering and frustration. You need to get on opponents' nerves. And Choi has uh, suffered too much, unable to continue. Lucas Cueto is the man who will replace him. It's uh, very much a like for like, Cueto. Also a left winger. A man who's uh, scored in the first two rounds of this DFB Cup. Was away at Lotta in the first round and then he got the opener in Leverkusen in round two, but yet to uh, get off the mark in Bundesliga two. This is Goller, stood up by uh, Jonas Neffert. Well, Benjamin uh, Goller is uh, certainly a player with a carefree approach to the game. Loves to take people on, loves to dribble. This is O'Shaughnessy with the throw. Touch on by Muhai. There was Cueto. Still, it's not away for Hamburg. The chance for Gondorf. Charged down by Guillermo. Well, on the balance of play. You'd have to say Karlsruhe would deserve to be in front by now. Hoffman with the header. O'Shaughnessy and Korbaltz, the central defenders, still in the mix up front. This is Korbaltz. And now they're out of position. Heiser launches it long for Hoffman. Touched away by Muheim. This is Kinsombi. It's a solid challenge from Vanitek. Well, Felix Zweier was in close proximity. Vuskovic over the top for Yatta. Still Yatta, now Gladsek. Wins the corner, Robert Glatzel. Three men around him straight away. Very much identified as the danger man, of course. Sonny Kittle with the corner. Across the face of goal and out by Kubalt for the next corner. Heart in your mouth time for the Karlsruhe defence. Kinsombi. Sebastian Schoenlau had just left a, a leg lingering. Well, true to form, Hamburg bossing possession so far in this opening half hour. And that's been the story of their season, but it's very much Karlsruhe who've had the better opportunities. This is Muheim.
Vuskovic for Guimera. The cross is deep for Czech Finanza. Cool bounce under pressure from Glatzel. Dealt with the danger. Well, though, Christopher Corbalt on his return to the side today was out injured against Schalke at the weekend, replaced by Daniel Gordon. Kittle neatly turning away from Vanitek. Vuskovic almost looked as if Vuskovic was going to shake to shoot. This is Yatta. Now Giamera. Glatzel to lay it off, still Glatzel. The frustration was evidence for Mario Vuskovic. Well, the question for Hamburg was always going to be how they would react to that uh, bitter defeat on Sunday against Werder Bremen in that key clash at the top of Bundesliga 2, the big Nord derby. The coach Tim Walter himself admitted that it was always going to be difficult to build the team back up after the defeat. Certain things left their mark on the players. But they've remained true to their style. Not created as many chances, perhaps, as they would have expected, given their dominance of possession. And also, when you consider that uh, in the league, they've created 42 clear-cut chances. With an XG of 50. Van Bremen who would have been expected to have scored more goals than Hamburg. But that one header from uh, Robert Glatzel aside, there's been precious little to threaten Marius Gersbeck. Tida gives it away sloppily. Check for that set. Bright out wins the ball back for Karlsruhe. Now space for Marius Vanitek to attack through the middle. This is Hoffman. May have been advised to have played Lucas Cueto in on his left. Kinsombi works the ball out for Jonas Meffert. Meffertz into the area, still Jonas Meffertz. Well, almost turned out to be a dangerous cross. But it's got the crowd going. Snatched at the cross, did Meffertz. Came off Tim Breithaupt. Could have been awkward for Karlsruhe. to be claimed by Marius Gersbeck. It goes long and quick for Benjamin Goller, but there he is again, Hoya Fernandez. Not so much making the penalty box his own, but almost the entire Hamburg half is firmly Daniel Hoya Fernandez territory. Despite conceding three times against Werder, he was absolutely superb in the Nord Derby. And his mitigation, two of the Werder goals, did come from the penalty spots.
So just under 10 minutes to half time at the Fox Park Stadion, still goalless between Hamburg and Karlsruhe. This all Bundesliga 2 affair means we will have a side from Germany's second tier in the semi finals of the DFB Cup this season. A chance to make history, the chance of a lifetime, as Christian Eichner described it. These are the kind of evenings, the kind of games that you're still talking about for years to come, is how Eichner put it. It's been encouraging for his Karlsruhe so far. But still very much on a knife edge. This is Benjamin Goller in for Hoffman. Neffert just has his heels clipped. But Hoffman very much more involved than his opposite number, Robert Glatzel. In this shootout between two of the most prolific strikers in Bundesliga 2. Hoffman with 12 goals to his name, Glatzel with 15. Both of them on target in the first round as well. Glatzel for Hamburg's narrow victory at Eintracht Braunschweig. Another of those historic names in German football, Eintracht Braunschweig, former German champions, also not too far from Hamburg. And Hamburg's cup run very much continued in that vein against traditional heavyweights of German football, Nuremberg and Köln. Needed a penalty shootout to progress past both of those. And this is Coeto for Karlsruhe, and he's brought down by Guillermera, who will uh, become the first player to enter Felix Zweier's book this evening. And is left with little option. Guillermera, Lucas Coeto would... Uh, Stolen away from him. And this free kick in a very promising position. And Guillermo just uh, for the protocol. Being shown that yellow card. Can have no complaints. Almost the look of bewilderment on the face of Lucas Cueto. Is this the moment for Karlsruhe to force that breakthrough with five minutes to the interval? Gondorf and Vanicek over the ball. Surely it's going to be Vanicek. Just sizing his options. It's Vanicek! And it's absolutely wonderful! Well, Philip Heiser it was, not Vanicek. Taking everyone by surprise. And Karlsruhe get the lead that they thoroughly deserve. Hoyer Fernandez was still sorting out the wall, expecting Vanicek to clip one. Not even Sonny Kittel as the draft excluder. Could prevent Philip Heiser curling a magnificent free kick past Hoyer Fernandez, who saw it late, but still just too much power on the shot. Well, now Karlsruhe have the bit between their teeth. This is Benjamin Goller. Away by Vuskovic. 
Yatta to break now for Hamburg. One pass from Yatta. Emblematic of the sides who saw their confidence take a battering at the weekend. Philipp Heiser's first goal of the season, only his second ever for Karlsruhe. Could be the most crucial of his career. Because as things stand, it's put Karlsruhe on course for the semi-finals of the DFB Cup. This is Sean Lau for Hamburg. Now Guillemera. Kittel to turn. Jack Vidatza. Away by Goller. There's the travelling contingent in full voice at the moment, as you'd expect, just two minutes to half-time. Their side lead by a goal to nil in the Volkspark Stadion. And as things stand, they will continue their cup hoodoo over Hamburg. Well, Vanicek it was, proving the diversionary tactic. Jack Vanessa, this is Jonas Mefet. Nicked away by Heiser. A jig of joy from uh, Christian Eichner, perhaps. And more, uh, a signal of how he wants his players to be positioned. Well, they've performed excellently so far in this first half. I have Karlsruhe. Really good value for the lead. Kinsombi. This is Muheim. Now Guillermo. Gets back with the claim. Not to set Gondorf off quickly. The chat for Nancy had read it all the way. This is Bakary Yatta now. Chak for Nancy. For Glatzel. Away by Corbaltz. Now Hoffman. And Karlsruhe can play their way out of trouble. Vanicek for Gola. There's only Gondorf in the middle. Vanicek's continued his run now. And away by Muheim. Now Gondorf back to Cueto. Two minutes of time added on. Jack for that, so who's on occasion, just tries to do too much himself. <laughs> Muheim, Swiss under-21 international, drifting out to the right-hand side now. And a no-look pass was seen by Philipp Heiser. 
Now Vanitek. Marco Tida. Hoffman. Bright out. Out to Philip Heiser, the goal scorer. This is Cueto. Still Lucas Cueto. Another chance chalked up for Karlsruhe. They're really going for it. Well, their coach, Christian Eichner, had promised that everyone was prepared to give everything for Karlsruhe. And for Kurt Gorey. And it's been a really impressive performance. They've kept Glatzel so quiet all evening. A bit over exuberant from Corbalt there, but you almost get the feeling that Corbalt will be following Robert Glatzel home tonight. Never left him out of his sights. Sonny Kittle. Yeah. Corbalt gave his goalkeeper, Marius Gersbeck, a little bit of work to do at the end of the first half. But it's job well done so far for Karlsruhe. Philipp Heiser's stunning free kick separates the sides at the break. And Karlsruhe, very good value for the lead as well. Hamburg in control of possession, but it's been the away side, Karlsruhe, who've created much the better opportunities of this first half. And remain on course for the semi-finals of the DFB Cup. The half-time score at the Fox Park Stadium, it's Hamburg nil, Karlsruhe 1.
Welcome back here to the Fox Park Stadium in Hamburg, where the home side trail Karlsruhe by a goal to nil, thanks to Philipp Heiser's stunning free kick. Christian Eichner and his side just 45 minutes from a first semi-final appearance since 1997. What a moment that was for Eichner to score his first goal of the season. So Karlsruhe get us underway for the second 45 at the Fox Park Stadion. Leading by a goal to nil thanks to Philipp Heiser's free kick towards the end of a first half which they dominated as far as chances go. But it was Hamburg who bossed possession. And nonetheless though, Karlsruhe more than deserved the lead that they took. They just seem to have a spell over Hamburg in the DFB Cup. Five previous meetings, Karlsruhe have won four of them. The last time that Karlsruhe lifted the DFB Cup back in 1956, and that was the second of back-to-back -back triumphs for Karlsruhe. Victory in the 1956 final came against Hamburg. of the opening goal and back then was none other than Hamburg club legend Uwe Zeele. This generation of his successes are not only chasing a second semi-final appearance in four years but also the game battling to stay in it. Fernandez really redefining the role of sweeper keeper. Just look how far out of his goal he is. Golo was quick to cut off the route back to Hoya Fernandez. This is Muheim, new man on loan from St. Gallen. And just 23 years of age. That. Hamburg left back, but already a much travelled man of the world. Played at Chelsea in London, Zurich in Switzerland, now Hamburg. It's thrown through well for Yatta. And Glatzel's in the middle. Intercepted by Gersbeck at the last. Just not being Glatzel's evening, has it? It was wonderfully worked through by uh, Kinsombi. First time cross from Yatta. But guess back, very much alert. And the last time that Robert Glatzel played in a DFB Cup quarter final, he was playing for Heidenheim away at the record champions by Munchen. And again, which he wouldn't have expected to have got anything from. He ended up scoring a hat-trick as Heidenheim pushed by him all the way, eventually only going down by a single goal in nine. 5-4 it ended to Bayern München. But no real openings for Glatzel this evening against Karlsruhe. Christoph Kubalz has had him in his pocket. This is Marco Tida. Well won by Muheim. Check for that set. Sebastian Schoenlau. This kid Sombi manages to dig it out from underneath his feet. Yatta. 
Well, there were three queuing up in the middle. Last time that Hamburg managed to reach the semi-finals, it was Bakary Yatta on the score sheet, but not enough to prevent. A 3-1 defeat against RB Leipzig in 2019. It's a good save by Hoy Fernandez and Hoffman! Karlsruhe lead by two goals to nil. A sucker punch from the top scorer. Philip Hoffman has put Karlsruhe into dreamland so far and on the verge of the semi-finals. Golo with the shot initially, there was no offside. And Hoffman on hands to steer the rebound home. Just sat up nicely for Philip Hoffman. They're now within touching distance of that first semi-final appearance since 1997. Karlsruhe, who've not won at the Fox Park Stadium in almost 30 years, lead by two goals to nil. Yatta for Hamburg. Jack Fidanzi. What will be the response? It's Glatzel with a header! Oh, the answer is an immediate one. Robert Glatzel, who's been quiet all night, suddenly makes some noise. Well, this cup tie just got pulsating. Jack Fidanza created the pocket of space for the cross. And Glatzel peeling away with the wherewithal to lift it over Gersbeck. Against Gersbeck's run. Beautifully logged into the opposite corner, and Hamburg, who looked as if they were on the ropes, are now right back in this. It's Yatta. Gesbeck has dropped it. Won't fall for Jack Fidanza. Now Jonas Meffert. Miro Muheim for Hamburg. Check for that, sir. There's a spring in his step as well now. Jan Guillemera. Now just go forward, Vuskovic, says his goalkeeper, Hoya Fernandez. Lifts it over the top for Yatta. Yatta up against Philip Heiser. This is King Sombi trying to turn away from O'Shaughnessy. It's a goal kick for Karlsruhe. So the respective top scorers both on the score sheet at the Fox Park Stadium. And we have a cup tie on our hands. 
10 minutes into the second half. Just minutes after going two down, Hamburg hauled themselves back into the game and back into the DFB Cup. Double substitution to be made by Hamburg. Joscha Wagnermann and Ludovic Reis will be coming on. comeback after six months out as a substitute at the weekend against Werder gets just over half an hour more game time and replacing Jan Guillemera will slot straight into the right back position Joscha Wagnermann a local boy Hamburg born picked up a thigh injury in the uh, Stadt Derby Hamburg derby against Zankt Pauli and faced uh, six months out. This is Foyer Fernandez under pressure from Vanicek. And Meffert manages to get the pass away as well to Ludovic Reis. So a little bit nice on for uh, David Kinsombi. Wagnermann on for Guillemera. Just dramatically brought down the average age of this Hamburg lineup. Both the new introductions, just 21 years of age. Here is Reis, Dutch under 21 international. Reis takes on the shots. It's set up nicely for Marius Gersbeck. Well, the thinking behind the move you'd expect, you'd suspect, uh, from Tim Walter is uh, just to inject a bit more intensity going forward. A little bit nice is slotted into uh, David Kinsombi's place in defensive midfield, but Rice, a uh, player with more intense high speed runs, really, over 34 kilometres an hour as well. And the next change. As uh, Georgi and Chagvedat says, first start for Hamburg comes to an end just over an hour in, replaced by Farida Alidou. Another youngster, another Hamburg born youth product in the lineup, just 20, as Alidou. So with Wagnerman and Alidou. To local born youngsters, to crowd favourites. Ali Du had uh, a sensational Hinrunde for Hamburg. A player who really loves to take the opposition on.
But uh, here, Ali Du showing the more defensive nature of his game, shall we say. But you can see the energy and the passion that uh, Tim Vance has introduced now with that triple change. Vanitek. It's away by Vuskovic. Alidou chases down Gondorf. Now Vanitek. Cueto. Bustled off the ball by Ludovic Weiss, but Cueto wins it back. And now Sean Lau. Out to Robert Glatzel. Ali Du looked to run at Heiser. Kulbals cool mops up. Proved why he's so important to Christian Eichner. That's Christoph Kulbals. Cool Now Sonny Kittel for Hamburg, it's Kittel, still Sonny Kittel to take on the shots and deflect it away for the corner. Just feeling the heat now at Karlsruhe. He was always going out for the corner but gets back, just making sure. Kittle with the corner. No free kick, says Felix Zweier. This is Ali Du. Hacked clear by Kulbaitz. Striding forward, it's still Yatta, always rising. But the encouragement from the stands. They can sense this tie is far from over yet. It wasn't too far away. Now Sean Lau. Cars are forcing the individual error. And there that risk that Tim Walter always likes to take. Playing out from the back. Refuses to resort to the long balls. Calls himself a football creator. Not a destroyer. The ball should be stroked and not hit. But sometimes, when you're the last defender and there are three opponents around you, Sometimes that long clearance isn't always the worst option. O'Shaughnessy with the long throw.
That's shaping up to be a long half an hour or so before Karlsruhe to defend this lead. It's been a familiar pattern in recent weeks for Hamburg as well that they disappointed in the first half. It was the case against Bremen, it was the case against Sandhausen two weeks previous in Bundesliga 2. They needed the break, the second half, to really get going. Did so on both occasions, weren't able to convert that into points on Sunday. But again, showing... Certainly more purpose about them since going two down. Wagnermann back to uh, Jorge Fernandez. Now Sean Lau. Vuskovic. Yatta just glides past his opponents and it's opened up for Muheim. Uh, Yatta gets the return. Neffert. This is Robert Glatzel. Deflected away. But he's finding his range now, Robert Glatzel. The corner taken quickly. It's away by Vanicek. Now Gola. Now Joshua Wagnermann. Yatta. Wagnermann on the overlap. And forces the corner again. Their seventh of the evening, Hamburg. And in Bundesliga 2, they've scored a league-high seven from corners. And this time, it's led to a penalty. Taken quickly. Glatzel it was. Who was tripped in the area. Impeded on his way through. Difficult to see the point of contact. But Felix Fire had pointed immediately to the spot. As Felix Zweier just uh, has consultations with the Cologne Excella, the Cologne Keller, as it's called, where Video Assist Centre resides in Germany. There was an outstretched arm from Christoph Korbaut. The discussions are lengthy and Felix Schreier will have a closer look. Well, there was a jostle between Korbaut and Glatzel. 
the corner. Just stepped into Glatzel's run somewhat. As Glatzel was making a dart for the ball in the middle. Felix Zweier taking precious time for this crucial decision. From the reverse angle as well, and the penalty is given. And a golden opportunity for Hamburg to level the scores with 20 minutes remaining. Well, they've been awarded more penalties than any other side in Bundesliga 2, and it's just about to get worse for Karlsruhe because Korbalt has seen a second yellow card. And Karlsruhe are now down to 10 men. Well, this could be the pivotal moment of the match. Karlsruhe down to 10, a second booking for Christoph Korbaut, who's been outstanding tonight. He completely neutralised the threat of Glatzel. But as it is, it's Sonny Kittel, who scored three from three in Bundesliga 2. He missed in the shootout against Köln in the previous round and misses this time Marius Gersbeck is the Karlsruhe hero well Gersbeck who saved the penalty against Hamburg last season in the league has made a crucial stop in the quarter-final of the DFB Cup It's a game that's had everything so far. And you sense there are plenty more twists to come. Sonny Kittel with the corner. This is Meffert. Hoisted back into the area for Glatzel to shoot. Blocked and away. And the tactical substitution now for Karlsruhe is Daniel Gordon, who's coming on. On for Lucas Cueto. That's bitter for Lucas Cueto, only brought on as a substitute in the first half, but has to make way now. As Christian Eichner just looks to shore things up at the back and see this through. It's the experience of Daniel Gordon, 37 years of age he is. A man with... Over 250 competitive appearances for Karlsruhe to his name. One of those was back in 2012 when Karlsruhe beat Hamburg in the first round of the DFB Cup. And he's been brought on now to ensure that Karlsruhe record the next victory. It's going to be one-way traffic for 20 minutes. This is Ali Du for Hamburg. Away by Breitaupt. Method for Hamburg. Vuskovic. And now back at Iata. Trying to twist and turn, create room for the cross. It's still Yatta, goes for goal himself. Well, Kittel's 
penalty was struck with power, but it was the nice height for Marius Gersbeck. And Gersbeck, who incredibly is playing with an injured hand at the moment, has grit his teeth, pulled out all the stops and preserved Karlsruhe's lead. Well, now Hamburg turning the screw possession-wise, very much in control of the game that way, but it's still Karlsruhe who've had the better opportunities and still, overall, can feel justified to still be in front. Now Yatta. Calmly done by Pytaps, but Goller's given the ball away. This is Yatta. Muheim. Kittel's corner, deep to the far post, Gordon gets ahead on it, and Gersbeck can gather. And you can't imagine he'll be in any rush whatsoever. Muheim with the header out, but... Karlsruhe again, those valuable hard yards. In an area of the pitch where Hamburg can't hurt them. Ali Du. This is Wagnermann. Neffert. Yatta, who's seen plenty of the ball at the moment. This time the early cross. And has a second opportunity. Yatta gets the return. And has the ball. Stolen off him by Marvin Vanicek. There's Hoya Fernandez who have to be careful. And Sean Lau will as well. With Hoffman breathing down his neck. They just couldn't take advantage, Karlsruhe. Now Miro Muheim. Just about got away with it. Now Glatzel for Hamburg, Ali Du. Daniel Gordon, who's almost twice Ali Du's age. Kittel takes the corner, it's claimed by Marius Gersbeck. He was outstanding against 1860 Munich, was Gersbeck. And at the moment, he's on his way to becoming a match winner again for Karlsruhe. The most crucial save of the evening from Sonny Kittel's penalty. And that is why Christian Eichner has brought Daniel Gordon on. All his experience. He's a player who Eichner said you can ring at midnight and he'll be ready to do the job for you. <laughs> Manuel Winsheimer.
enters the fray for uh, Hamburg for the final 10 minutes. An attacking move. Muheim, the left back, replaced by Manuel Winsheimer. A striker by trade, can play left wing, right wing. But Hamburg going all in now. We're into the final 10 minutes at the Fox Park Stadion. They will feel like an eternity for Karlsruhe. Clinging on to that slender lead, but always threatening. On the counter. As Gola gives chase. They only know one way to play, Hamburg. On the ground, building from the back. This is Wagnermann. And away by Breitaupt. Oh, Robert Glatzel finally got his goal. Had been rather quiet up until then, but come very much more into the game in the second half. Hamburg's danger man. This is Wagnermann. Just heaved clear by O'Shaughnessy. Glatzel now with 10 goals in 10 DFB Cup outings. Reduced the arrears for Hamburg. They're still not out of it, but they still have plenty to do. Yatta. Touched by Vinsheimer for Rice into the area. This is Rice. That's asking a little too much of Felix Zweier. The shepherded out by Daniel O'Shaughnessy. Skipped past two. He was always looking for the contact. Well, it was a little bit Rice. And Daniel O'Shaughnessy, the Finnish international at centre-back. Has been unassuming, but barely foot, put a uh, foot wrong. And a weight of responsibility on his shoulders now as well, in the absence of Christoph Korbaltz. And Daniel Gordon alongside him to assist. Fernandez takes it quickly. Wagnermann sets off down the right. Yatta, the source of much creativity for Hamburg in the second half in particular. Ludovic Reis just showed too much of it to Philipp Heiser. And the free kick is Karlsruhe's. Hamburg have not lost any of their last seven matches against Karlsruhe in all competitions, including in the Bundesliga, in Bundesliga 2. And of course, that historic playoff match of 2015 when it looked for all the world as if Hamburg were going to suffer their first ever relegation from the Bundesliga. They trailed at the Wildparkstadion until that late free kick from Cardoso gave them a reprieve. 
but it was only short-lived. Hamburg now in the fourth year and in Bundesliga 2, a club formerly known as the Bundesliga Dino, the dinosaur, the only side to have played in every Bundesliga season until that relegation. And try as they might, there's been no escaping from Bundesliga 2 as of yet. The cup had offered a glimmer of a chance for a return to those glory days for Hamburg. A semi-final appearance in 2019. The cup run this year. The three-time DFB Cup winners, the six-time German champions, the former European champions are heading out as it stands. The double substitution, Fabian Schleusener, Fabio Kaufmann will be coming on for Karlsruhe. And it's Benjamin Goller who's uh, run himself into the ground and the main man as well, Philipp Hoffmann, the scorer of that second goal, who've been replaced. Just nothing left in the tank for Goller and Hoffmann. So Schleusner and Kaufmann, both attacking players. but they'll be asked to perform defensive duties you'd expect for this five minutes or so remaining. This is Sonny Kittel. Bakary Yatta. Now Ali Du. Wagnermann, now Yatta again. Jonas Meffert. Meffert clipped to the far post, but out for yet another corner. The 12th of the evening, Hamburg. Yatta. Winsheimer for Hamburg. Still Winsheimer gets the return. And that should be gathered and is gathered by Marius Gersbeck. Schleu, isn't it? Can't win the header. And now Reis eases his way past Gondorf. This is Ali Du. Wagnermann for Hamburg. And hooked away by Fabio Kaufmann. A momentary reprieve for Karlsruhe because Hamburg come again with Yatta turning away from Heiser. Still Yatta, and the just no way past in the end. Corner number 13. Sonny Kittel with the corner. It'll fall for Winsheimer. Still Winsheimer. Just can't get the ball under control. Into the grateful, grateful arms of Marius Gersbeck. Another immense performance from the Karlsruhe number one. It's going to be a Kaufmann. A player who never gives up. Worked so hard to turn pro. His family had advised him to take over his father's car dealership, but had a burning ambition to become professional. And it's that desire that Christian Eichner is demanding for just a couple more minutes.
They had such high hopes. Going into the quarter-final, there was even dreams in Germany's second city of an all-Hamburg DFB Cup final. Zank Pauli was still in the competition. They went down on Tuesday night at Union Berlin, and now... Their city rivals, Hamburg, are following them. There will be six minutes of time added on for Hamburg to force extra time at least. The last two rounds have gone to penalties for Hamburg. Can they force extra time now? It's Robert Glatzel right at the death for Hamburg. The top scorer pulls it out the bag. A stoppage time equaliser. But you have to feel for Karlsruhe, for 10-man Karlsruhe, who have fought so hard, have given everything. It's a real blow. But cometh the hour, cometh Robert Glatzel. No offside in the build-up. Yatta with a first-time cross, and Glatzel without the attention of Christoph Korbaltz for once with space in the area and the decisive touch sends the Volkspark Stadium into ecstasy now Sean Lau A last-minute reprieve for Tim Walter and for Hamburg. O'Shaughnessy oh, with the throw, it's on by Daniel Gordon. For Gondorf at the far post, but now Wagnermann. And Reiss will send Yatta off and away. Leads the charge for Hamburg, it's Bakary Yatta. Still Yatta into the area. Well, that took the wrong option. Vinsheimer and Glatzel were queuing up in the middle. Oh, how bitterly disappointed. You just feel for Christian Eichner. Well, he promised before the game that these are the kind of nights that you talk about for years to come. Well, he was right on that front. The 25,000 inside the Volkspark Stadion. rejuvenated it would have almost been too much for them to take defeating the North Derby on Sunday and then heading out to the DFB Cup or so they thought they're still in minutes they are still on the road to Berlin Man to give chase. Now Ali Du for Hamburg. Just held up by Fabio Fabian Kaufmann. Vanicek had asked a little too much of uh, Fabio Kaufmann. Voskovic. V. 
Vince Heiner. We'll find Yatter at the far post. Officially, we're into the last minute. This is Vanicek. Will there be time for one final chance? Marco Tida. This is Gondorf, who was looking to draw the free kick, but uh, Felix Zweier unimpressed. And right on the whistle, there is full time from Felix Zweier. Hamburg got out of jail right at the death. An injury time equaliser from Robert Glatzel has kept Hamburg's cup dreams alive. So bitter for Karlsruhe, for Christian Eichner. His ten men had battled so valiantly. That here the equaliser in time added on from the main man in Hamburg, from Robert Glatzel, who'd been kept quiet so long. But in the end, still with two goals to his name, Hamburg's top scorer. Creating another magical DFB Cup story. Glatzel, the man who was hat-trick at the quarter-final stage for Heidenheim in Munich against Bayern had threatened to cause one of the greatest shocks of all time. It wasn't enough on that day, but now this is a very different story. Hamburg at home with a man advantage. With the boost that that late equaliser provided are very much the favourites going into extra time. They needed a penalty shootout in the two previous rounds of Hamburg. Well, in the last 16, it was Hamburg themselves who suffered the blow of a last-second equaliser. That was in the 120th minute of Curl through Antony Modest. But they went on to win the penalty shootouts in the most extraordinary manner possible when Florian Kainz hit the ball against his own leg counted as a double contact and his penalty didn't stand but those are the kind of moments when you just feel is this your year Here, look at the goals. It's just Philip Heiser's opener for Karlsruhe towards the end of the first half. Then, almost immediately after the turnaround, Philip Hoffman made it to the reply from Hamburg was instant. Glatzel lifting the ball over Gasbeck, and then in stoppage time with the faintest but most crucial of touches. Smiles all round for Hamburg now. 
They can feel it. However cruel it was for Karlsruhe, the, the bare few, have to say that uh, Hamburg had been pressing for the equaliser. Just as in their pre two uh, previous Bundesliga two games. It was a different proposition in the second half for Hamburg. minutes of time added on at the Fox Park Stadion. <laughs> so Robert Glatzel and Hamburg starters off for the first period of this extra time in Germany's far north in the Hansestadt of Hamburg. And this a city and this football club with a long and proud tradition. Over the last couple of years, the football club Hamburg has had to deal with a sense of faded glory. The memories becoming ever more sepia-tinged. Not since 1987 have Hamburg lifted any silverware. That was in the DFB Cup. And they can sense, perhaps, one more shot. Well, for either of these two sides in the semi-final away, Tsarby Leipzig, who uh, cruised to victory just down the road from here in Hanover, 4-0. The final score there. And last night, Union Berlin seeing off Zankt Pauli. Hamburg City rivals. In uh, a quarter of an hour or so, in the fourth quarter final, Bochum face Freiburg. Yatta. The cross is blocked. So come what may. It will be a Bundesliga opposition for either Hamburg or Karlsruhe in the semi-final. Well, it's an entirely different proposition going forward now for Karlsruhe without uh, Philipp Hoffmann at front. Fabian Schleusner it is, who's assumed the role of lone striker. And this is Kittel for Hamburg, looking for Glatzel, of course. Ali Du. Meffert. Now Ali do again. Well, I was expecting uh, 
Sebastian Sean allowed to have uh, carried on the run. But the pass a bit symptomatic of Alidou's form in recent weeks. He's rather underwhelmed after raising the bar so high in the Hinrunde. And the uh, Hamburg sporting director, Jonas Boltz, uh, said that perhaps Ali do uh, needed to focus on doing the simple things rather than the spectacular. It was a danger that uh, he'd received a little bit too much praise in the Hinrunde. Important to keep the young players grounded was the message from Jonas Boltz. Marvin Manichek with a free kick for Karlsruhe. Looking for Gordon! Well, managed to get the purpose on the header, but just not the direction. The king of the air, the König der Lüfte. They uh, nickname him down in Karlsruhe, Daniel Gordon. Out. Now Fabio Kaufmann. But in every area of the pitch, Hamburg making that man advantage count, being able to double up, triple up in some cases. Gondorf misses Vanicek before Karlsruhe. Clipped back into the danger zone and away by Ali Du. Kaufmann. And Marco Tida. Fabio Kaufmann, the cross is good. Schleuser couldn't get the right connection, but it is out for the corner. Vanicek opts for the short option, in by Heiser. Felix Zweier had uh, pulled back the infringement. O'Shaughnessy just uh, nudging uh, Vuskovic over. The man. Options were limited. Vince Heimer. Ali Du with the shots. And Ludovic Reis rushes over to take the corner quickly. This is Sonny Kittel. Ali Du urged to shoot. Well, the last time that uh, Marius Gersbeck faced Hamburg in the DFB Pokal, he was uh, playing for a side that were down to 10 men as well. Back then, Osnabrück of the third division at the time.
came up against Hamburg. They went down to 10 men at pretty much the same time that Karlsruhe did uh, this evening in the 72nd minute. But on that occasion, Osnabrück uh, triumphed 3 1 in the end. His Karlsruhe side have been pegged back. This is Ludovic Reis. Well, the clearance is unconvincing from Heiser. It's still in the danger zone. And the free kick goes Daniel Gordon's way. Gordon, the oldest player in Germany's second tier by some distance. Still uh, retiring is uh, not yet an option. And there's still plenty to achieve, not just in his career, but in this next 25 minutes as well. Device penalised. It was O'Shaughnessy with the throw. Gondorf keeps it alive for Karlsruhe. Vanny check. Hamburg haven't had time to set the defence. This is bright out. And now the count is on with Bakary Yatta. The foul was tactical from Tim Bright out. Won't mind the yellow card, taking one for the team. Only one way to stop Bakuriata in full flow. Sebastian Schornlau, the Hamburg captain. Leads from the back. Now Sonny Kittle. Fancy footwork from Daniel Hoyer Fernandez. Bakary Yatta. Seen so much of the ball down that right hand side. This is Glatzel now. Robert Glatzel. It's still Glatzel. And Kittel, good save. Still the ball not away. And finally, Gondorf can clear.
Glatzel and muscled his way past Daniel Gordon. A point blank from Sonny Kittle. And Gersbeck is feeling the pain. Well, quite literally throwing his body on the line for the cause, Marius Gersbeck. Sonny Kittle must have thought he'd scored the best opportunity of extra time so far. Created once again by the incursion from the right from Bakary Yatta. Well, in the league as well, Karlsruhe face most of the opposition attacks down the right-hand sides. A result, perhaps, of uh, the fullbacks, Heiser and Tida really pushing up. <laughs> Half time in extra time, no goals so far. Still, this DFB Cup quarter final tie remains finely poised. All they could really do, Christian Eichner's uh, Karlsruhe, was try and weather the storm. They have 15 minutes to see this through to a potential penalty shootout. Just summoning the energy for 15 more minutes. At the end of a cup tie in which they've invested so much. Well, they made good on his promise that they would give everything in this match. Oh, and they have with Karlsruhe. A much higher. He's on for Farid uh, Ali Du. Well, the youngster who'd uh, entered as a substitute is now pulled off himself. Well, Moritz Heyer, who's uh, right back by trades, can also play in defensive midfield. But an all-rounder can slot in anywhere, really. He'll be missing uh, the trip to Nuremberg on Saturday for Hamburg after picking up a fifth yellow card of the season last Saturday. Last Sunday, sorry, against uh, Werder Bremen. It's higher who was on the score sheet against Verda. Sean Lau with a lot to do. And it's given the ball to Breitaupt as well, who's felled by Bakary Yatta. Well, Yatta pleads innocence. But have flown in. It was always going to be Breitaupt's ball, really.
Marvin Vanicek. O'Shaughnessy with the header. On for Gordon. And away by Vinsheimer. Well, the appeals fan ball and given as well. The wry smile from Marco Tida, who will have to track back. Tim out was uh, across to help him out. And this is more it's higher. Wagner man. Well, the change has resulted in Wagnermann just uh, moving up to the right wing position. He can play there with uh, Moritz Hyatt slotting in behind him and facilitated a switch to the left hand side for Bakary Yatta. Moritz Hyatt with the header. Gondorf, Schleusener will give chase and almost got there as well. Long throws are always a job for Daniel O'Shaughnessy. He was a javelin thrower in his uh, youth. This one long towards Gordon again. Gondorf just snatches at the volley. Vuskovic. Now Wagnerman. Out for the corner from Philip Heiser. Vintzheimer almost finds a way through to Glatzel. Rice's corner for Glatzel. It's Sonny Kittel. Oh, the point blank. And again, Gersbeck. Incredible piece of goalkeeping. But the offside flag had been raised. Still, Gersbeck was not to know. Almost maybe disappointed that the fantastic double reflex save would have been to no avail anyway. The game of head tennis finally ends and Sonny Kittel sets off for Hamburg. He's got Wagnermann charging away to his right. Well cut out by Philipp Heiser. This is Bakary Yatta. Now Reis. Well, the ball's through to Sonny Kittle, just a little too predictable for Hamburg. More than one occasion recently. I mean, offside anyway on this occasion, but still. The last few occasions, Philipp Heiser's known exactly what Hamburg were planning. Manuel Vinsheimer to run at Marco Tida. 
It's still Vince Heimer. Oh, the ball bobbles away from him. It's still loose and play on, says Felix Zweier. Kaufmann and Gondorf just got in each other's way. Schloy, isn't it? Felix uh, Swire had made up his mind uh, on the foul about 20 yards earlier. Yatta just keeps the ball in play. Here's Yatta now for Hamburg. Winsheimer. Now Sean Lau. It's still Sean Lau. Away by Gordon. Intercepted by Breithaupt. But immediately under pressure, and Hamburg win the ball back. Moritz higher now. Almost impossible to launch the counter over the top for Karlsruhe. Daniel Hoyer Fernandez is always waiting in, in anticipation. Vinzheimer can't turn away from Gondorf. This is Wagnermann. Higher. Plucked out of the air with Sebastian Schornlau just lurking behind him. Ludovic Reis surging forward. Yatta. Glatzel frustrated in the middle field. It was an opportunity lost. Yatta not looking up, just had one thing on his mind. With five minutes of extra time remaining, Tim Breithaupt is feeling the exertions of an enthralling DFB Cup quarter-final. Is a force back, but not into the error. Wagner man now. Just about manages to keep the ball in his possession. Moritz higher, that's neatly done. Slip through for Ludovic Weiss now. And away by O'Shaughnessy. Wagnermann. Again, O'Shaughnessy with the header clear. But still, Hamburg come. Looking to force a winner. It's cleverly done, but not precisely done from Ludovic Reis.
Jonas Mathers. Now more gets higher. Easily away by Marco Tida. This is Glatzel for Hamburg. More gets higher in support. Vince Hyman will keep it in. Back of Iata. You can feel the tension inside the Volkspark Stadion. Vince Heimer. It's Sonny Kittel. How frayed must Hamburg's nerves be in this DFB Cup campaign? They're heading now for a penalty shootout for the third consecutive round. How much more can they take? Heiser goes long. Higher with the cross. It's Wagner man to shoot, blocked by Gondorf. Back in from higher. And away by Gersbeck, only as far as Yatta. Showed too much of it, but the shot still comes in. But it's a tame one from Manuel Vinsheimer. The final minute of the 120. And the final substitution to be made by Karlsruhe, Ricardo van Rijn, former Dutch international. A man with a wealth of experience, came through the Ajax youth system and he's replacing a man with his career in front of him, Tim Breitout, the 20-year-old local youth product. He's enjoyed a rapid rise to start on this season and run himself ragged all, after, all evening. This is Reis. Now Sonny Kittel. Away by Kaufman. Vince Heimer. And there the confirmation that once again it's a penalty shootout for Hamburg. For the third consecutive round, they got past Nuremberg in the second round, then past Köln in the last 16, and now in this all Bundesliga 2 affair with Karlsruhe. It's a penalty shootout once again. Ten man Karlsruhe, who battled so valiantly against at times relentless Hamburg pressure from this man as well in particular Bakary a constant threat provided the assist for Robert Glatzel's stoppage time equaliser at the end of the regular 90 but they just weren't able to force a winner in extra time weren't Hamburg but they've experienced the penalty shootouts. Gersbeck, who's already saved a Sonny Kittle spot kick in this match. Okazu well, is sporting director, Oliver Kreutzer, back at his old office. Held that role at Hamburg for a couple of years, but now back for his second spell with Karlsruhe the place where he made his name as a player and the encouragement for Sonny Kittel just put the uh, the mess earlier out of your mind the real character is Tim Walter animated presence and he can be sure that he'll be transporting that enthusiasm across to his players. 
They still have it within their grasp to Karlsruhe. So cruelly snatched away from them. In time added on. Down to 10 men after that penalty that was awarded after deliberations that went on for an eternity. Gersbeck proved the equal to Sonny Kittel. Jerome Gondorf elects to go first for Karlsruhe. The penalties will be taken. Close to where the Karlsruhe fans are situated. Not in front of the hardcore Hamburg fans in the North Tribune. And now the lottery will begin. Daniel Hoyer Fernandez will face the first spot kick. It's a job for the captain, for Jerome Gondorf. The man born in Karlsruhe. Back at his hometown club. Will take the first spot kick. Had confidently elected to go first after winning the toss, Jerome Gondorf. focus and concentration and dispatched by Jerome Gondorf the power took it past Hoya Fernandez eventually it was struck confidently Hoya Fernandez got the hand to it got a good hand to it as well And for Hamburg, it's also the captain stepping up to the plate first, Sebastian Schornlau. It's Schornlau against Gersbeck. And Gersbeck comes out on top for the second time in this match. In regular time, saved from Kittel. And it's advantage Karlsruhe after the first round of penalties. Pretty much the same position that he saved it from Kittel. And Hamburg have missed the first opportunity. It's Philipp Heiser next up for Karlsruhe. The man who opened the scoring from the free kick. It's Heiser! A more confident penalty you could not wish to see. High into the top corner with pace and power. More a demonstration, a statement of intent than a penalty. So it's Joscha Wagnermann. The Hamburg-born, Joscha Wagnermann. Cool as you like from the spot. Gersbeck had gone into the same corner as the previous two penalties.
Marvin Vanitek. Vanitek, who was successful from the spots in the previous round at 1860 Munich. He scored two of two in Bundesliga 2 this season as well. Marvin Vanicek. But he's missed this time. Hoyer Fernandez has hauled Hamburg back into the shootout. A fine save at full stretch from Hoyer Fernandez. And Hamburg are back in it. So Mario Vuskovic to draw Hamburg level in the shootout. Vuskovic. The focus, the determination, and the confident dispatch. It's all square again at the Fox Park Stadion. Ricardo van Rijn only brought on in the very last minute of extra time. The former Dutch international, the man who's played in the Champions League, in the Europa League, won the Eredivisie with Ajax. And Van Rijn's penalty is saved by Hoyer Fernandez. And now the onus, the pendulum swings back in Hamburg's favour. He made it rather too easy for Hoyer Fernandez, didn't he? The top scorer, Robert Glatzel. And Glatzel has Hamburg on course now for the semi-finals of the DFB Cup. Two goals in normal time. And now the penalty that was decisive, question mark. They have to score. Otherwise, Hamburg are in the semi-final. Daniel O'Shaughnessy. And Hamburg are through. Off the post, Hoyer Fernandez is the hero for Hamburg. They're into the semi-finals of the DFB Cup. And for the third round in succession, it's thanks to a penalty shootout. This is a team with nerves of steel. They were heading out, trailing in time added on at the end of the 90. They found an equaliser. They were trailing in the penalty shootout after Sean Lau missed the first one. But they dug deep, they turned it around. And Hamburg, this most famous of German football clubs are through to the semi-finals for the second time in four years. Once again, Hoya Fernandez went the right way, but O'Shaughnessy off target. Oh, you get the feeling now, this is a season that will live long in Hamburg's memory. Chasing promotion back to the Bundesliga. And now through to the semi-finals of the Cup. An evening of high drama at the Volkspark Stadion. A long evening in which Karlsruhe 
invested so much. They battled so hard. But the will and the sheer determination never to give up has seen Hamburg through. The cruelest of exits for Karlsruhe. And Hoyer Fernandez leads the players to take the plaudits from the hardcore supports. It promises to be a night of celebration in Hamburg. They have Robert Glatzel to thank for the goals in normal time that rescued this match after being two goals down. And Daniel Hoyer Fernandez for an outstanding performance in the penalty shootouts. Match winners and heroes to the Hamburg fans. To them, the spoils and the place in the semi final. A thrilling night of DFB Cup action ends in yet another dramatic penalty shootout victory for Hamburg. They're through to the semi-finals. Thanks for joining us at the Fox Park Stadion. A wonderful evening of DFB Cup action. Hamburg through on penalties. Thanks for joining us and till next time.